Hey everyone, this is Wei and thanks for joining me here once again. So for this portrait drawing, what I want to show you is how you can shade realistically. And one of the ways to do that is to avoid drawing lines at the beginning, other than the reference lines. You know, you start off the drawing by shading it. And by shading it, you know, you're going to bring out the form. So let me show you this little exercise and I'll talk about the process along the way. Alright, so I'm going to sketch uh, Tyrion Lannister here, one of uh, my favorite characters from Game of Thrones. Um, in order to start this, I'm going to do like a slightly different method, and one of the ways of drawing is to, um, you know, to actually see the form and, and start shading as opposed to drawing lines and stuff. Like if you see the nose here, you don't want to draw like a, a line for the nose, right, because it really isn't there. And the only reason you see it is because, you know, there's some shading. So I'm just going to start with the eye, and I'm going to go with the left eye first. So I'm just going to rough in just very lightly. Okay, and just, I'm just going to start shading. Now I am using a 4B. I'm using one of those mechanical pencils where you put in the lead. So it's going to be nice and soft. And I'm just kind of... The purpose of this is to... You know, try to restrain yourself from doing any kind of line work. Um, you can do it later on, but at the beginning it's just... You know, you're just trying to read the the values, you know, the, and then just start shading there because if if you get the shading right, you know, the everything else just falls into place. So, as opposed to drawing like a hard line to represent where the eye is, all the little features, and if you do it this way, it's actually a lot more. You know, your your, your shading will be a lot more realistic. Now you could always start with a, like a really light um, line, outline, just to just so that you know where things are. But for, in this case, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna wing it because I just kind of want to show you the different ways of drawing, and, and this is just one way of of doing it. So you know, so you can see it's starting to take shape right but it's very soft and it's very yeah just very blurred so at the same time here I'm just kind of trying to block in some of the reference points so like his eyebrows right here okay. and I'm constantly adjusting you know where things are and that's one why you want to you know start off soft so that you can adjust for it. Let's just start off lightly. Okay, so here's here's the line I'm actually gonna do because it's such a hard line right here. Alright. So I can actually start moving uh, let's move across a little bit. So his nose, how you get this point here is just basically uh triangular. Now if you go straight up, you kinda of meet up with the uh the corner of the eye right here and then you can see this angle right here from the edge of the eye so it's kind of like well, roughly maybe this angle so if you go straight down from here his nose will probably be somewhere around here okay so now I can start <clears throat> shading that and then how wide it is it's almost at the width of the eye here here, straight down, so somewhere higher, somewhere around here. All right, so let's continue shading. And if you're gonna do this, you know, um, you know, don't don't worry about too much about the accuracy. That's actually the the fun part is the shading. So in terms of shading methods, um, you can see what I'm doing, right? I'm just kind of doing like little little wiggly shapes it's almost as if I, as if I'm drawing with these curly motions and that's one way of shading with, with, with the pencil another way is obviously you know with cross hatching and you see that I do some of that too like I'll, I can go like this and then I'll go and then I'll go the other way like here I'll go this way and then I'll go this way so, alright let's keep going 
So even when I'm not sure what's going on, I still kind of like to keep, you know, my the tip of the pencil on the paper and just just continue to, you know, just kind of wiggle, keep wiggling. Because if you're not sure, you can always just line it up. You know, don't push out the, um, hard onto the on the paper, and then it'll just be really really soft. So when I am sure, then you can go ahead and like push it a little bit harder right here. So I'm just getting some of the darker areas. Now another thing, uh, okay, let's see. Okay, we got some of the nose. All right, let's go back to the eye. Now that we got some of the filled in. Um, whenever you're drawing, um, your pencil gets really dull. Like if I sh keep shading like this, you see how dull it is? All right, and now if you want a hard line, you really can't get it with this edge. So what you, what you do is, is you just turn the pencil a little bit, and all of a sudden you got a much harder edge, or you can even tilt it like this. So when you're shading, you, you gotta know, you know, how how dull it is, and if you need a sharp line, just turn it a little bit, and now you got a sharp line. And you see that um, pretty much on all the artists, when they're drawing, like right now, see how I'm turning, because I, I need like a little sharper edge right here. And you see that a lot, you know, they'll, they'll just keep turning it because, you know, at one point or another, it's going to just get really dull. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with a dull pencil, but sometimes you just need a hard line. Okay, so let's, let's push it a little bit. Again, I'm using a 4B, so it's very soft. And I'll go in later with a 2B. You know, that way you can get a little bit more detail because with a 4B, because it's so soft, it doesn't sink into the paper as much. Um, uh, I am using sketching paper, drawing paper, so there's a little bit of tooth to it. You can see that you know, there's quite a bit of textures on it. And I've always kind of liked this kind of texturing on the paper as opposed to just regular you know, print paper where it's very smooth. All right, so let's, let's draw the lip a little bit. Let's see if I go straight down. Again, I'm just really eyeballing everything straight down. Slip goes all the way out here. Then under the bottom of the lip is always dark. Well. Assuming you know light is usually on from from the top, and there's a, usually a sharp edge right here because that's actually the the shadow you know cast from the uh, lower lip. So, okay, Let's see goes down. Let's see about probably about this much. All right, lines for the lip, lower lip. So even though I know this is going to be really dark, um, you can see how that I'm not making it super dark yet. It's just, it's just a preference of mine. I like to keep everything in balance. I don't go too dark in one area. Okay. Yeah, it looks like I probably made this phase a little too long. All right, let's go back to the eye. Now I'm just gonna go even, even, go in even darker. And I'm gonna start to try to pick up more of the form. I mean, it might be kind of hard to see here, but 
I could kind of see there's quite a bit of variation in there. Like this area right here is not completely dark. And you know, once you start putting the value, you're gonna start picking those those things up. And that's why it's really important to just start somewhere. You know, you gotta start shading first and then those you you, you know you you'll begin to see all those little variations and like right here in the bottom is like this line is it's got some eyelashes on the bottom right. it's darker and then the bags under underneath the eye sometimes in drawing it's, it's good to exaggerate things a little bit so that it shows up more. Okay, I'll keep going here. So you can see it's coming out, right? You can see the forms coming out. You know, you're starting to feel the little bulge right there. I'm just gonna keep going. A little scar. All right, scar is easy, so I'm just gonna skip that. Let's do the side of the face a little bit. So these big, broad, broader areas, you know, you can see how it just kind of it's more like cross hatching, and then you just kind of do one area. But even if you do cross hatch, um, you know, try to go back in with the wiggly shapes. Just a little bit, just to blend things in. So you don't you, you don't want to be like doing wiggly shapes in one area and then all of a sudden one area is like really hard and and cross hatch. Alright, so I'm gonna make this eye right here just, just darker just to bring it out. Just so I, I can see where I am in terms of the values. So see see how once I put this edge right here, um, now all this all of a sudden this you know the, this corner of the eye here is not dark enough, right? Because it's all relative. So I can blend that in more. Let's move down to the nose. It's got an odd shape for a nose. I think there's a little ridge right here. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna skip the scar. Almost looks like a mistake there in the it's like a little check mark anyways. Okay. So it's starting to take form. So I'm gonna punch it in, the little dark areas right here underneath the the little creases underneath the nose always very dark. That's where the shadow. Yeah, I think I made his face way too long. Okay, I'm just gonna keep going. All right, so let me rough in this other aisle just quickly. So you can start this way. You see how I'm doing? I'm just kind of, I'm almost like sketching in the lines and you know shading at the same time. So, and by doing this, you can, you know, you, you start to see it, you know, because every, every mark you make is a reference point. And it gives you, 
you know, more and more accuracy. You know, with more and more reference points, you're going to get more and more accurate on it. All right, so the eye, let me move this down a little bit. So let me, let's see at this point, let me, let me bring in a 2B pencil and show you what I mean. Let's see if I, let's make this a little darker. I can bring in, I can, I can bring in the uh, 2B pencil to start, you know, g giving a little bit more detail. Just let me darken this a little bit more. And then with the 2B pencil, you know, that, that, that allows me to get a little bit more control. And I can shade it a little bit more realistically, like actually blend in some of the areas. So right now everything is pretty harsh. It's a lot of texture. All right. So now this is, uh, again, it's um, the 2B pencil, and it's another lead holder. And this one, I actually have it pretty sharp, which is fine. It's for little details. So I'm going to go in and actually just shade a little bit. And what this does is kind of smooth things out a little bit. And because you'll fill in, you know, some of the bigger gaps, you can see it as I'm shading, you can see how it, how it fills in the little areas a little bit. You know, the fills in the paper, the two for the paper. Now at the same time, you gotta be, uh, be careful with this. You don't wanna go too, too hard because you can actually end up rubbing the textures of the paper off. Or, you know, end up depressing it so much that it becomes smooth and you really can't shade on the paper anymore. So this is almost like, uh, you know, shading in the you know, the mid-tones a little bit, just... I mean, you don't have to go to a 2B. You know, you can, you can stick with a 4B if you like. It doesn't matter if you know how much texturing you want. All right, so that's how you can use you know the 2B just to smooth things out a little bit. Now I'm gonna go back in with a 4B because those are the darker areas. And I'm just gonna start shading a little bit even more. And I'm turning the pencil a little bit more just so that I can get like a sharper edge. And that will help me you know fill in the, the area a little bit better, just like the 2B. So with this kind of shading method, you know, you can really get a pretty realistic look. And it doesn't take a lot of time, as you can see, I'm doing everything in real time. And it just depends on, you know, how much realism you, you want, you know, how much of this stuff you want to keep doing. Because you could always go in with a with a two B and really, you know, hash out all those little details. But so it depends on how much time you want to spend on this. Kind of exaggerating the shadows a little bit more, just a little bit easier to see, and then, you know, makes the drawing a little bit more interesting. Yeah, you, know, you can you can use you know what you see as reference, and then you know do whatever you want and just put your own artistic expression.
All right, so here um, I pushed it a lot more. Um, so same kind of thing, you know, with 4B, just kind of, you know, wiggly shapes and just start shading. So uh, at the same time, I just kind of adjust for some of the inaccuracies as I'm, as I'm shading. So you see, if you look at, you know, this, this whole drawing, it feels very, I don't know. I mean, it might not look like them as much, but it feels soft, right? You, you kind of feel the form and you don't see any kind of harsh lines. And, and that's because, you know, just, just the way it was drawn, you know, I, I try to avoid doing the lines, you know, so that I can get, you know, see the form develop as I'm shading. Now, you know, whether or not you do uh, a portrait like this, uh, it's a different matter, but, you know, just, just try it this way, you know, just look at anything and just start shading it and, and, you know, without drawing the harsh lines. And it's really useful because it will get rid of your um, tendencies to, to see things so sim simplistically, right? Like if you see a lip, you guys go, oh yeah, that's just a line. But it really isn't when you look at it, you know, there's a lot of very little variations in there. And, and it's those minor variations that's gonna, you know, bring out the form. You know, um, like the nose area, little things like this. Just, and it will help you to train your eye. It just, you'll be able to see a lot better. And, and I tell you, you know, a lot of drawing is just, it's basically just being able to see what is there. And lastly, what I want to mention is that, you know, whenever you're doing any kind of shading, um, what you need to be doing is kind of, you know, squint your eyes a little bit. Um, and they kind of teach you that in art, the, the beginning art classes. Just kind of squint your eyes and, and, and look at the reference, you know, and then look at your drawing. And what that does is just it gets rid of all the, um, the details and immediately you can see, you know, the overall values of things, you know. If you know certain areas gonna be very dark, like if you squint your eyes on this, you know this is gonna be really dark. And when you do that, it's just it'll, it'll help you to to see things as they are and shade a lot more accurately. So uh, I'll probably push this a little bit more and I'll call this done. So just give it a shot, you know, use a uh, try to use a four B or two B and just start shading and uh, try to avoid doing any kind of lines unless you have to, you know, even if you do, just make it real soft. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next time.